Just over a year ago, we deployed an insane solution to our storage problem. The Petabyte Project. A petabyte of raw archival storage. I mean, that thing is freaking awesome. We have yet to have any problems with it. But there's still a major issue with this deployment. It's not geo-redundant at all, which means that if there were a fire in the Linus Media Group warehouse, or I mean, really any kind of natural disaster, we could potentially lose our entire back catalog. That is anything that we haven't already uploaded to YouTube. So we endeavored to find a way to, as inexpensively as possible, back up the entire server. That's all 370 terabytes of currently stored data, plus anything we would want to add in the future. So that's easy enough, right? Right? I think so. You know what else is easy? Your move over to a better chair, like the ones from Noble Chairs. Their Icon Series Real Leather Edition gaming chair was designed in Germany and inspired by luxury car interiors. Learn more at the link below. Just hope they weren't inspired by like the trunk of a luxury car because that'd be very uncomfortable. Now there are a lot of different ways that we could go about backing up our server. Some of them easier and some of them harder than others, but almost all of them are gonna be limited by one thing, our internet bandwidth. I mean, don't get me wrong, we have a symmetric gigabit connection, I'm not complaining, but when you're talking about hundreds of terabytes that are already in the archive, and then up to a couple of terabytes a day being added, things can start to take a while, like, like months a while. Now our first idea was to build something locally, fill it up with data here using our 10 gigabit network, and then ship it off site, a sort of like, ah, thank you, Jake. Oh, wow, uh, petabyte project part two. Now, this solution wouldn't actually expand our storage capacity because it would just be an identical server, or that is to say two servers, with the same data on it. But since our internet service provider offers us inexpensive co-location, it would actually be very cost effective from an ongoing standpoint, except for one small problem. If we had to buy two more decked out 60 drive storinators, we'd be looking at, with the drives included, upwards of 70,000 US dollars. So converted to Canadian rubles, that is getting dangerously close to six-figure territory. You can, you can take that away. So, so that eliminates hard drives. You good? Yeah. Okay, just remember, lift with your back with a twisting, jerking motion. Yeah, All right, well, I was thanks. working on that. So that eliminates hard drives. What about tape storage? A rack mount tape library like this one from HP Enterprise only costs about five to $7,000. And high capacity 12 terabyte LTO8 tapes are about 160 bucks a piece. So for over 500 terabytes of uncompressed backup capacity, that's actually looking pretty good by comparison. But there's the fact that we'd need two of them and it looks like we're still spending well over 20,000 US dollars up front, lump sum, throw that on the black card, you know how it is. So hardware-based solutions, are not looking too peachy. Uh, what, what about, um, shoot, what's it called? It's kind of like buzzwordy, um, di uh, disruptive, uh, no. blockchain. No. no. Oh, 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 cloud, cloud storage. You guys were all shrieking at us back when we originally built Petabyte Project for not using cloud storage for our archive in the first place. So uh, I think this is where you come in. We're gonna check out some AWS here there, buddy. So we're, this is Glacier, so this is like slow. Start the download. Okay, so if we just wanted to back up everything we got right now. 70-ish terabytes? $1,500 a month? Wow. Plus support, you oh, know, yeah. you need support. Yeah. 1667, so if we wanted to store the full, what is it, about 760 terabytes that Something we have? Something like that, that we could have. Oh. We, $3,400 a month. 
I mean, I get it. I guess these guys have to cover the upfront costs that they're paying for that same hardware, and they've got, you know, geo replication and all that kind of cool stuff as well. But like, holy balls! Wait, hold on a second. Go, go back to that. No, no, no. This is before you even actually pull any data out of it. Okay. You have to pay to pull data out. So let's, let's go with the cheapest one. Let's yeah. Say we we want to pull sure. the whole thing. Another two grand. So so this is great. So let's say your your office burns down and you've got to pull all your data out of the cloud. You get a nice handy dandy bill for two thousand dollars to add insult to injury. And that's that's the slowest. That's the slowest speed. speed. So let's say we let's say you need it all of it right away. Real fast. Uh, oh, gigabytes. Oh. Uh, Oh, 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 twelve grand, no big deal. Whatever, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Casual, right? Casual. And the crazy part of this is that other enterprise solutions from the likes of Google, Microsoft, and Backblaze aren't priced that differently. So, what are we gonna do? I'm not paying three to five grand a month to store data on tape. Wait, does does Google still have unlimited storage? Well, yeah, but there's no way that's actually unlimited. Well, I mean, it's got to be. That would be false advertising, wouldn't it be? Unlimited Access cloud storage. with the $10 per user tier, unlimited cloud storage, or one terabyte per user if fewer than five users. So we just get five users. That's like $50 a month. That's nothing. It can't be unlimited. I guess we got to try. To find out if this loophole is actually going to work, we fired up a Windows 10 VM on our Utility Unraid server and installed a tool called rclone. So Jake's got the unlimited Google Drive account set up and working, so it should just be a matter of running the command and seeing what happens. So maybe start with channel super fun? Channel super fun. How big's that? Oh, uh, let's see. That might take a while. <laughs> but remember guys, this is... Uh, over a hundred drives spread across two completely separate boxes that are networked to each other. Wow, this is taking forever. I think we had, all, I, I indexed the entire Petabyte project and I think we had almost a million files on it. It took like literally, I think a couple hours to do, but I did index the whole thing. Winderstat doesn't work, it dies. It like, just can't handle that much. Okay. So should we see how it's going here? Oh, it's it's not going at all. What the heck? What? Oh, there's a limit. So you were right. Yeah. It is limited. It's limited, but it's limited in a way that the advertising is not false. So it's unlimited data. Yeah. As long as it's 750 gigs per day. Uploaded, yeah. As it turns out, Google saw bastards like us coming a mile away. <sighs> And it looks like if you don't want to have your upload cut off, you're only able to do 750 gigs a day. Otherwise, you have to wait an additional 24 hours for an upload ban to pass. So what we would have to do then is slow our uploads to just around um, eight megabytes a second, which would mean that our current 370 terabytes would, uh, you got that calculator handy? 370 terabytes. terabytes. Oh. <laughs> Would take about two years. So while Google hasn't limited our uploads, they have effectively made it completely impractical for us to abuse their system this way. I guess that makes sense. Oh, wait, nope. We're not defeated yet. New plan. So you're actually required to pay for a minimum of five G Suite accounts in order to unlock that unlimited storage tier. But that got us thinking, and actually I'm gonna give Jake full credit for this idea. What if we used that limitation to our advantage? Check this out. So it turns out that the 750 gig per day upload cap is per each one of our users here. So by just adding a couple more accounts, uh, user six here and uh, Mr. Jake Tidy, we can actually end up, even if we limit each account to not go over 750 gigs a day, we can still end up 
maxing out our upload speed to drive at about 40 to 45 megabytes a second. Now, it's not the prettiest solution, but this has been going for a week and each one of our instances here has now done about four terabytes of data. Yeah! It's a lot of data. It's a lot of data. So conclusion time then, I guess. Yeah. I mean, for now, there's, there's no guarantee whatsoever that Google isn't going to shut down this workaround. And there's a fair number of Googlers out there, I think, that watch our videos. So us making this video sort of increases our chances. But for now, at zero upfront cost and $70 a month for our seven G Suite accounts, that's less than $1,000 a year, we have got what is quite literally the least expensive multi-terabyte backup solution that you could have. We're basically terrible people. I'm okay with it though. I can live with myself. Well, on the plus side though, this supports encryption on upload and download. It does. And there are no fees for pulling the data down in the event of some kind of a disaster. I mean, who knows how fast it's gonna be. That helps me sleep better at night. <laughs> so there you go. We're pretty happy, even if anyone watching at Google uh, isn't. <laughs> Hi, our YouTube rep. I don't know if I'm Sorry. supposed to tell people your name. Oh, yeah. Probably don't. <laughs> Ting is the mobile carrier that's focused on customer service and customer satisfaction. When you call Ting, you don't speak to a robot, you get put through directly to a person who can help you. And you don't pay extra for the privilege. The average Ting bill is just 23 bucks a month per device, and they've got cheaper data rates than ever. It's now just $10 a gig beyond the first gig. So go try out their savings calculator over at linus2018.ting.com. If it turns out you'll save on Ting, they'll actually cover 25% of your cancellation fee for your existing contract up to $75. And using our link, that's linus2018.ting.com, you can get 25 bucks in service credit or towards a new device. Go check it out at the link in the video description. So thanks for watching, guys. If you work for Google, well, you know what to do. But if the video was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured in the video description. Also linked in the description, oh, I guess if you're a Google shareholder, you're probably not stoked on this either. Also <laughs> linked in the description is our merch store, which has cool shirts like, uh, mm, neither of the ones I'm wearing. Do you have an LTT oh, uh, shirt? Uh, that, that thing. Like this one. It's a cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which uh, you should totally join.